YouTube, we live, baby. We live. What's up, y'all? Welcome. Number 20 something or other. Welcome. We are live. If I look like a well done hot dog right now, it's because I've been out training all day long, but I'm here. I'm here to answer your questions. I'm here to solve the world's dog training problems one step at a time. Now you saw on the thumbnail, on the title, failure is not your dog's fault. It's not the dog's fault. So I'm going to explain what I mean by that by telling you a couple of stories. And then you can let your mind wander a little bit on that because it's a Tough to generalize in dogs, but failure is not the dog's fault. Let me tell you a story from a couple clients that I've had over the years. Trained a dog, dog went home, probably like a year later, something like that. Uh, they want to send the dog back in for a little refresher training because the dog jumps like crazy anytime someone comes through the front door. Dog runs up and jumps all over him, runs up, jumps all over him. And of course, coming home from training, he didn't do that. So failure is not the dog's fault. So in that situation, and I'm totally not trying to, oh, you'll never believe what this client did. No, all me and my clients are very close. We have these conversations. It's all good. They'll never see this anyway. So anytime someone comes through the front door, the dog's jumping all over them. And in the owner's estimation, this is the dog's fault. Oh, no, don't jump. Hey, get off. No, 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 don't do that. Oh, he's jumping. It's him. He's jumping. He's jumping. Remember, we got to stop jumping. We got to stop jumping. We got to stop jumping. Here's why it's not the dog's fault. Because the very first time that this ever happened, someone comes through the front door, the dog beelines and jumps all over them. Happens once. Your dog is giving you information. Your dog can't speak English, but they can communicate with you. Your dog's giving you information. So that particular dog informed the owners that when someone enters the front, I'm going to run up and jump all over them. The dog told you he was going to do that by doing it, right? He did it by doing it. If that ever happens more than that one time, who's that on? Is it on the dog? I don't think so. Here's why. The next day, the following day, the following day, the following day, month, week, month, year, the dog continued to find himself in that situation. Monday, someone comes to the front, walks in the door, Dog jumps all over him. Dog just told you, I'm going to jump on someone that comes in the front door. Tuesday, dog's off leash, free roam in the house. Someone comes to the door. Dog runs up, jumps. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. The owner's facilitating the situation that's going to allow the dog to go up and jump. The dog already told the owner, this is what I'm going to do. And the owner continued to put them in that situation, set up the exact same way, and expected different results. All you're doing is conditioning and reinforcing the jumping. The dog told you they were going to do it. You were surprised, frustrated. Maybe you didn't care when the dog kept doing it and doing it and doing it. So... The dog failing to not jump, whose fault is that? Dog already told you he was going to do it. And we kept rinsing and repeating the situation. 
Think about this broadly, guys. Here's another one for you. Really the same kind of thing. The climb command, which I call it, aka a place command. Pet dog staying on the bed in the house. I trained a dog. Dog knew how to climb. Dog knew how to climb. People coming in and out. Anyway, years after training. Our dog won't hold the climb. Anytime someone comes over, he jumps off the climb. He runs over to him. He starts jumping all over him. How many times did that happen? If it's happened more than once, who's it on? Because the first time it happens, the dog gives you information. Hey, I heard someone at the door. I know someone's coming in. I'm going to abandon my command, run over and do whatever I want. That's what the dog told the owner. Now, if the owner, the next day, the following day, week, month, year, does things the exact same way that they did it that first time that the dog told them, now we're just facilitating the situation. Now, inadvertently, we're conditioning and reinforcing that habit. It's always on us owners. If my dog makes a massive error on the field, whether it's an honest mistake or he just blows me off, whose fault? Oh, it's that stupid dog, so stubborn. Whose fault? Is it the trainer's fault maybe? You know what I mean? So failure is not the dog's fault. Failure is on the owner and them not recognizing that the dog's giving them information. Someone comes to the front door, dog runs over, jumps all over them. The dog's giving you information, but the owners don't understand. They don't speak dog. They go, oh, get down, get down, get down. Oh my God, he's so excited. Okay, hey, get down, get down. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, how are you? Yeah, good to see you, blah, blah, blah. And then that's it. They go, oh, they're so excited. They don't know that the dog is telling you something. Hey, I'm going to go. Someone comes in the front. I'm going to jump on him. Cool? Cool? And if you don't change what you're doing with that dog, they're going to think, oh, yeah, it's cool with them. Good. I'm going to do it. And owners condition and reinforce that for weeks, months, and years. And then one day wake up and are just frustrated. And whatever straw broke the camel's back, they go, I'm going to put on an e-collar. Oh, I'm going to put on a prong collar. Oh, I'm gonna, now I'm going to make the dog pay. Well, you've already facilitated that for days, weeks, months, and years. Now you're going to turn around and tell the dog everything's going to be different? I don't think so. I don't think that's clear communication. I don't think that's conflict-free. I train a climb command. It means the dog has to stay on their dog bed no matter what for hours at a time. No mistakes allowed. That bed is in the corner of the room. The front door is right there. If someone enters and your dog cannot maintain composure and their command 10 to 20 feet away, how on earth are they going to maintain composure and a command a half inch from the person? It's impossible. Anytime I do a go-home lesson, that dog's on a climb, that owner walks in, sits at least five feet away, and we need to achieve calm before we get any closer. Because if you're not calm five feet away, you really think you're going to be calm an inch away when the dog can touch you, smell you, jump on? No way. So to wrap this point up, Failure is not the dog's fault. You have to change everything in that situation that you're doing with the dog. If you just keep letting them awfully free roam the house, why on earth would they ever listen? So I want you guys to think about it in those terms. The first time it happens, your dog's giving you information and then it's on you. You can do whatever you want with that information. If you don't care about training, you ain't going to do nothing with the information, then you're going to have a jumpy dog. Hey, if that's fine with you, 
hey, personal preference, whatever. I don't like it. So think about that. If you think, oh, my dog failed this, or hey, my dog's not doing that, or my dog's pulling, my dog's jumping, my dog's barking. They gave you a piece of information, and I think that you didn't do anything with that information. Food for thought, guys. Food for thought. Let's get into some of your questions now. What do we got here? Scrolling. I can't wait. What's up, Alexa? Missed the last one, so I needed to be here today. You got that right. Welcome from Liverpool, UK. What's up? Alexa, remember when I said my service dog always felt like he was working? Well, I had two service dogs come over to hang out, and he actually played. I actually saw him relaxed and playing. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love when dogs are relaxed and playing. Glad to be on board today. What up, Matthew? What up? He bites. Get you a shirt. Figure it out. Get it. Let's get into it. You watching the final, Andy? Heck yeah, I am. In France right now? Yeah, big competition in France right now. I'm definitely watching that pretty closely. We got Axel and Mark Vallon competing in there. Let's go, baby. I look like I've been in the sun for seven weeks straight. I look like I just was rescued from being lost in the desert. <sighs> it's a hot one today, y'all. I'm glad to be inside. I love listening to this dude. You rule. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Nice to see you again. Big shout out, everyone. What's up? Big thumbs up. Oh, yeah. Young grasshopper here. Jordan, loyal patron, he's here. I pay attention to this stuff, guys. I pay attention to this stuff. Jordan's all on the Patreon. He's all on the YouTube. He's an up-and-coming dog trainer. He's always on the lives. I pay attention to that kind of stuff. Always show up, period. I don't care if you're tired, busy, not in the mood in a fight with your partner. I don't care. You always show up. That's what I'm talking about. Thumbs up. Hey, love your live Q&A. What's your opinion about, about flirt pole games? Of course I like the flirt pole. Flirt pole's good. Um, puppies and brand new dogs, flirt pole, very good. Could I go camping and use that as a training opportunity for my dog? A million percent. Not only can you, you should use that as a training opportunity. Some free time, but some training time. I'm getting a He Bites t-shirt for my birthday. Scientifically proven to make you a better trainer. Don't worry, I'll release the documents on that soon. Just keep waiting. What about a dog that wants to attack other dogs? How do I get her to play nice? Well, Sean, let's think about the information that your dog's giving you. Think about the information that the dog's giving you. Does it look like your dog wants to interact with another dog? You know, sometimes we can push things on the dog. Oh, go play nice. Go play nice. I mean, Sean, what if I forced you to play nice with somebody that you didn't want to? It could be a million things. Your dog could be reactive for a number of reasons. Um, they could actually be aggressive. They might not. I have absolutely no idea, but literally don't worry about other dogs whatsoever. Forget about playing nice. Throw that out the window forever. Your question should be, how do I get my dog to engage with me and play with me? Even when other dogs are around, which is a stressful situation to her? There's the question, Sean. And the answer is engagement. Dude, I have a mini Australian cattle dog. Love to tug. What was the brand? I don't know what brand you're talking about. I don't know. You can get good tugs from Learberg. You can get them from Sainov, Demine, Elite Canine. All those are good. My GSD doesn't like the dachshund. Should I keep them separate from one another and fix their relationship? 
you know, doesn't like could mean a million different things. But yeah, if two dogs don't get along, I would never force them in the same area. Zachy boys here, dropping knowledge. What up, Zach? Zach's on the lives. I pay attention to this stuff, Zach. I pay attention. When is it the dog's fault? Is it ever? You tell me, Black Cape. When is it the dog's fault? Is it ever? I'd love to know what you guys think. My whole 10 minute rant in the beginning, it's always the owner's fault. Give me an example when it's actually the dog's fault. I'd like to hear that. Because any argument where you go, oh, it's the dog's fault, I could counter argue that the training just isn't good enough. Oh, my dog blew me off. My dog always comes when called, but uh, he found something and then he blew me off. That's his fault. Maybe you haven't proofed his recall to the fullest extent. It's an interesting thought though, isn't it, Black Cape? That's kind of why I brought it up. When is it the dog's fault? Is it? I don't know if it ever is. I look like a hot dog. Hey Andy, can you talk about the benefits of the barking on command? Yeah, look, barking on command, I mean, it's just another behavior you can train your dog to do. Um, you know, the dog does everything with their mouth. They don't have hands like us. They don't have words like us. Um, so having full control over the dog's mouth and their barking, definitely a benefit. And if you have an intimidating looking dog and you tell them to bark on command, I could scare the crap out of a lot of people. So I like that. He explains everything so well and not like we're all professionals. That's why I like listening to this dude. Thanks, man. Andy, I brought my working Mal home and my kids play with him and he plays, but now I come home and he goes, Ape, should I continue to let them play? Um, yeah, look, if you enjoy the, the, the playtime, that can be structured, but we need really good structure in the dog's life. Think about playtime like recess in a kid's school day. Recess is a half hour. The kid's at school for eight hours. A lot of the time is them sitting at a desk, mental exercise, learning, and then a little bit is cutting loose and playing. So keep the dog on a real tight structure, and I think you'll be fine with that. I did learn a lot of good things from you and helped me with my mal Dutch. Awesome. I'm glad to hear it. I got to tell you about yesterday, Andy, I went to the zoo and it was the first time my dog saw a lion and he gave a little bark. I corrected right away. Damn, you brought your dog to a zoo? <laughs> your dog was probably like, what the hell's going on? Andy, love you. Talk on failure as the owner. Right on. Yep. She Bites shirts are coming soon. My artist is like three quarters of the way done with the She Bite shirts. So those, those bad boys will be dropping all types of soon. Can you work loose leash walking and focused heel at the same time? If not, which one first? Um, it, John, it depends what level your dog is at to work on them at the same time. Um, for teaching, I wouldn't. For proofing, you can, but for teaching, you have soul sessions where it's loose leash walking and you put the dog away, and then you have specific sessions where it's attention, then you put the dog away until both of them are pretty dialed in and reliable. Don't merge them. Keep in mind my dog has a service dog. Oh yeah, it's the service dog. That's probably why you brought it to the zoo. Yeah, I mean, the zoo's crazy, isn't it? Hey, Andy, the Danish problem free Roddy owner is here. Hey, what's up? I'm getting one of your shirts this week. Thank you. How many confident female pet shepherds have you seen? LOL. It's zero for me. 
I got to agree with you a little bit there, brother. Now, I don't want to offend any female German Shepherd owners, but yeah, the thing is, when you when you have a working breed like a German Shepherd, okay, and they're meant for work, and they're meant for a certain lifestyle, a certain environment, German Shepherd, when people take that dog and their genetics, and I hate to use water down, but I'm going to do it anyway. And they water it down and they go, hey, general population, you love the look of a German Shepherd. You love the idea of a German Shepherd. Now you can have one. But they fiddle with the genetics. It's not the original. It's not the dog that's meant to work on a farm and live outside. It's not the dog that's meant to compete in IGP-3 at a world level. It's technically a German Shepherd, but the genetics have been very altered so someone in an apartment can own them, someone with a kid can own them, and in theory, it's like, oh yeah, here you go, it's good, oh, they're smart and loyal, but that's the problem, and I agree with Jordan, females can be um, even more nervous. If there was 100 males, 100 females, there would probably be a higher percentage of female dogs that were more nervous than the male. They're a little bit trickier. They're a little bit, um, I mean, this is just sweeping generalization. So, you know, anyone could have an example otherwise. But no, Jordan, traditionally, nine times out of ten, if there's a female German Shepherd pet dog that's coming in for training, the confidence is not going to be high. The independence is not going to be high. The resolve is not going to be high. But, I mean, I have had a couple for sure. I've had a couple of phenomenal female German Shepherd. I love female dogs. I've had a handful of female Malinois, all competed, all did really well, monsters. Um, so I, I love it. I love both. But, um, yeah, if you're a pet dog trainer and they go, hey, we got a female Shepherd that does this, you're usually like, it's going to be a tough one. <laughs> This is going to be a tough one. Let's see what we got here. Let me scroll back up. But yeah, Jordan, zero for sure. Yep, thank you. Any suggestions for building ball drive? With weak possession, five-month-old Malinois. You know what, Tommy? I got a different take on this. You have a five-month-old Malinois who doesn't have a lot of ball drive, doesn't care about the ball, whatever. Here's what you do, Tommy. You don't show him a ball. If you want to be real about this, you don't show him a ball for three months minimum. He don't see a ball. He forgets a ball exists. There ain't no ball anywhere. Tommy, I have had dogs as puppies. Two, three months, five months, eight months, hardly any ball drive on the surface level to the naked eye. Hardly any ball drive. You throw the ball, eh, I don't know, hardly any ball drive. Fast forward six months, fast forward a year, insane about the ball. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that, but I'm saying... I've seen that. Five months as a baby, Tommy, you can do more harm than good by trying to force the ball down their throat. Frustrate them with the ball, tease them, blah, blah, blah. shelf the ball. So, Tommy, the dog's giving you information. Dog's like, I don't like the ball that much. Okay. We ain't going to play with the ball. Done. Revisit. When you're a little older, a little more mature, you have a little a more uh, broad understanding of day-to-day -day life and, and your situation. So totally shelf that and then holler at me in a couple months. I'll tell you how to do the first session. 
Jordan, that being said, what's your way to train with those lower confident dogs? Engagement, engagement, engagement. Yeah, Jordan, it is a, a beast with a deadline. When you have a short deadline, that's why pet training is so difficult. You have a real short deadline. Like in all reality, that dog needs like three to six months of like a proper lifestyle and like really light training and just let them grow and develop, then hit it. Of course, we don't have that luxury, but how do you build a more confident female German Shepherd? Well, th you start putting pressure on the dog. You start correcting the dog. That's going to bring it down even lower. So we don't want to let the dog walk all over us. We don't want to kiss the dog's butt, but it's a tricky dance that we have to do there. So yeah, engagement, you can never go wrong. Taking things as slow as you can, you can never go wrong. Um, I like to be in really close communication with the owners. And this is a skill in and of itself. You ain't going to wake up one day good at this. Just like you ain't going to wake up one day and just play the piano. But I like to convey to the owner um, realistic expectations. You know, you tell them, well, and you kind of have to do this before the dog comes in. So you're not like, hey, uh, she's not really confident. Uh, I'm going to have. So you kind of want to plan this out. But I tell the owner, look. You know, she's going to be in a new place. She's already uncomfortable. She's already stressed. So the more pressure and rules I start putting on, the more stress she can get. So I can train heel, sit down, stay. But the dog's going to look a little when they do it. So focusing on mastering the basics more than advanced. Oh, we want an off-leash recall. We want an off-leash heel. We want to be able to heal it. Okay, let's slow down a little bit, though, because... She's having a meltdown just being in a different place. So those are great goals. Let's slow down. Engagement, hand feeding, play, short sessions, no big rules, no big pressure. It's called finessing the dog. You have to get as much as you can out while still maintaining the dog's character. So tread lightly, my friend. Send me a video. I'll critique it. Patreon crew, those are the luxuries. Good question. Hi. Hi. Is your wife also a dog trainer? I'm training scent detection for bed bug detection and find it hard to live with my new partner who does not know anything about dog training. Any advice? God, I love that question. I love that. Yeah, she's a dog trainer. I I think it's Elizabeth or Elizabeth. I couldn't read. Being as deep in dogs as I am, I couldn't even fathom someone not into dog. They'd be done with me so quick. They'd be like, all right, when do you clock out? Like, when's your free time? When can we just, I'd be like, when? What? Clock out? Of what? <laughs> What? Oh, the dogs always come first, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm kidding a little bit, but serious too. Any advice for you with a partner that just ain't really about that life? Um, get a new partner. No, I'm just kidding. Um, little spoonfuls at a time. Little spoon. You just... If you want them involved, a little spoonful of time. But here's the here's the like the best thing you can possibly do. Okay, you have a partner that's not on the dogs at all. That partner, they 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 don't touch the dog. They don't take care of the dog. They don't let the dog out. They don't play with the dog. They don't interact. I, nothing, because you're gonna end up just correcting them and nitpicking them, and they're gonna be like, all right, screw this then. I can't do nothing with your dog. Whatever. Mm. So you, it's just your dog, it's your thing, and they don't have nothing to do with it. Even though my wife's a dog trainer, she doesn't touch my dogs. I don't touch her dogs. I can't even remember the last time I saw her dog. I mean, we don't touch each other's dogs. Because all I'm going to do is nitpick and be like, no, that was wrong, that was wrong, that. And it's just going to be... <clears throat> the biggest bummer. So 
try to keep it as separate as you can. The dog is your thing. It's a battle for sure. Yeah. Just the dog is you. The dog is your thing. If they want doggy time, get your own dog. Train your own dog. You know what I mean? We don't cross pollinate. We just, we keep that separate. I'm way too specific. Way too specific. Ain't no one handling my dog. That's just me. That's just me. Um, yeah, it's tough. Good luck to you. I hope maybe that helped a little bit. Hit me with a follow-up if you want. South Carolina, what's up? I don't even trust her to let her off the leash yet. All righty. Hey, Andy, amazing results with the meal feeding by hand. Why is there lack of relationship building in the dog training industry? It blows my mind. Thanks for everything. It's because in the dog training industry, this is going to sound rude, but 1% of people actually know what they're doing. And the other 99% genuinely think that they know. That's the, the crazy part. Uh, why is there lack of relationship building in the dog training industry? Because trainers suck. That's why I do this YouTube stuff. Trust me, guys, I got better things to do. Well, I mean, I don't want to say that. It sounds me. But I, I could be doing other things. Let's say that. I could be doing other things. I could be making money other ways. I'm doing this because I'm disgusted with what trainers put out there and say to do. I'm going, oh my God. I don't know why. It's a it's a crazy business. Love your channel. Thank you. Have a five-month-old Mal. He's amazing and love to play with the tugs. Heck yeah, you work that dog. Andy from Argentina. What's up, Argentina? I have a five-month-old Mally. Is repetition and attention to what the dog... Okay, I got to translate this a little bit. Is repetition and attention the key to communication? Engagement, repetition, incrementally building each of your behaviors second by second, considering all the information the dog gives you back. That's the key. On your last video when you brought your dog to the park, it was pulling a lot. Was it the dog's fault or yours? No fault. What's the problem? There's no problem. There's no fault. Why can't a dog pull? <laughs> I mean, have you seen my dog heel? My dog has a beautiful heel. I'm going to compete in ring three with my dog. So... No one's fault. There's no problem. I told him he could go out on the end of the leash, do whatever he wanted. He did exactly that. Nothing I would change about any of that. So no problem there. Oh, my God. It. Sorry in advance, man. I might roast you. Is five hours of daily exercise... And minimum 15 miles enough? Or is it too much for a Mally Dutch, 16 months old? It's too much by a million percent. Dude, if you want to cripple your dog by two years old, keep doing that. That is horrific for the dog's structure, their development, their joints. Just because a dog can does not mean a dog should. No, that is, that is a horrifying amount. Horrifying amount. Subtract like a million from that. That's preposterous. Sorry for roasting you. Thank you for tuning in and asking. But seriously... That's bonkers. Are you trolling me? You might be trolling me. You can't be serious. When are you posting the Patreon video you previewed at the end of your last video? Ah, 
Good question, Matthew. God, I tried to get to it today, but I got too busy. It'll be there. Matthew, I'm going to have that up by tomorrow. It's a crate training video with a puppy. Matthew, I will have that up midday by tomorrow for sure. I just, all I have to do, I have to do a little explanation at the beginning, slap that together, post it up, but I'm going to get that to you ASAP. It's a good one. Your Q&As are the best. Is it okay to ask for eye contact when on heel before I let him free to go sniff? Not only is it okay, you need that 100%. He started doing it, and I feel like we have a lot more engaged. I always want the dog to check in before we release. Because if you're here and the dog's here like this and you say go, they'll never look back up at you. Camping at a dog show with my dogs and puppy. Great distraction for obedience. Oh, yeah. That's a great environment for a little training and environmental exposure. Expo what? Exposure? I'm just curious, what do you feed your dogs? I do kibble. I do kibble. It's just easier, but raw is definitely the best thing that you can. You're welcome, Sharla. Thanks, Andy. Regards from Transylvania. Let's go. We all have fangs here. I thought you did. That's why I'm watching you. Love you. Thank you. Don't bite me. Never the dog's fault. Bingo. Thank you. You're welcome. The picture behind you, your Malinois going over the wall. How high is that wall? The French Ring Palisade get up to uh, 2.3 meters. So high as F for sure. Should I allow my dog to let me know if someone is walking by my house? Currently, I acknowledge, thank him, and say it's enough. Then he stops. Is it too confusing? No, not at all. If someone walks by and your dog barks at him, it's not bad at all. If you tell him to stop and he stops, perfect. No, that's not bad at all. Personal preference, you know. Depends where you live. Depends how you feel. Some people want their dogs quiet at all times. No, a little bark. Nothing wrong with that. Do you know how dogs get kennel cough? Um, I mean, can, I can't like break it down scientifically. Um, how to answer that? Um, I don't know. I, I'm more of like a, I'm more bro science there. The kennel cough is like real prevalent when there are a large group of rotating dogs in a small place, a dog daycare, a boarding place, when there's a big assortment of dogs from all over the place that are all living or spending the day in one area, it's really prevalent there. Like, knock on wood, here we don't really have those problems because we run, like, such a small operation. And it's, like, too easy to keep everything, like, really clean and disinfected. And, you know, we're, we're dealing with a handful of dogs as opposed to, like, 30 or 40 uh, but I haven't really heard of a dog getting kennel cough that hasn't been to a daycare, a boarding place, a dog park. So I believe, just my, again, I'm not Mr. Kennel Cough, but it has something to do with that mass of, if your dog's just living in your house, never goes anywhere or stays anywhere, like I've never heard of a dog getting it there. Let me read this last one real quick. Hi, Andy. Still processing. If your dog does it more than once, you are letting it happen. Jumping, pulling, biting. Oh, yeah. How'd the dog get in that situation? The owner.
Just got a nine month old female Belgian Malinois. Nice. She gets so scared in the backyard when she hears the garbage trucks and she attempts to jump the front fence. What should I do about it? It's stressful. Good question. Dog definitely can't be off leash. A very secure, snug collar. You holding the leash. You stand there like a statue. Don't try to kiss the dog's butt. Don't try to redirect the dog. Just stand there. Let the dog experience it. Let it go by. Stand there longer. Move on. Nine months is extremely young. Sounds like it's a new dog. Look, if the dog's scared, let the dog be scared. Your dog's allowed to be scared. The dog's allowed to be scared. It's natural. Oh my God, that loud noise. Let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to zip it. You're going to keep your feet in the same spot. You're going to hold on to your leash and you're going to be a post. And you're going to stand there with the dog and the dog's going to go, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And the dog's going to learn through you doing nothing that that's not a possibility. It's not a possibility to go. It's not. Don't try to talk to the dog. Anything you do or say, it's associated with stress. Don't do it. Just stand there. And your dog goes, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And then they go, it's not an option. Scratch that. What's next? I'm going to whine and cry. Cool. Let them whine and cry. They're allowed. Just stand there. This is going to take time, my man. This might take three months. Just stand there with the leash. No, you can't go anywhere. Hey, dog. Hey, nothing bad's going to happen to you. You're good. See what that does. Training my dog right now. Good for you. What's your way to train with those lower confident dogs? Engagement, engagement. Didn't, that, didn't we already do that one, Jordan? Dogs with low confidence are very difficult to train in a short period of time. Because also you got to remember, you're a stranger to that dog. Of course, they're, they're the king of their own house with their own mommy. But it's very tough to do, Jordan. I mean, this is where the experience is just, Jordan, you got to train a thousand dogs like that with a thousand different owners. And then you'll start to get the feel for it. Hey, bro, what's up? I got a German Shepherd male, end of February. He's five months old. I've been consistent and doing obedience training Monday to Friday and been walking him. He still jump and leash pull sometimes. Yeah, man, five months old, like me personally, I'm not concerned about jumping or pulling at all at five months old. Now, if a boarding train gets dropped off and it's a pet dog and I have three weeks to train it, okay, yeah, then I'm worried about that employment. But like if it's your own personal dog, dude, Freddie jumps and pulls at five months old, no problem. I'm building a program. I'm building obedience. I'm investing in the dog. So pulling, jumping, yeah, it's a puppy, big deal. Don't worry about that. Just arrived, not sure if anyone asked, how do you deal with awfully stray dogs? I live in the Caribbean, holla, and we have so many stray dogs, some back off easily. Yeah, that's just such a tough situation. They make these like, um, it's like a canister and it like shoots air. It's almost like, like an air gun. It's not an air horn, but it's like, and it like compresses. And like shoots air, of course, completely harmless. You know, it's like some people use a squirt bottle, but they, they make these things that's like, Psst. and I think like Learberg sells them. As one of my clients told me about it. I don't use them, but uh, you could, I try one of those suckers, man. That's a tough situation there. Definitely getting young grasshopper on my first suit for sure. Not a bad idea. Hey, Jordan, you better get a Demine suit. My boy Hervé will kill you if he sees you in some freaking 
Roca or St. Ov or something. You're welcome. Yo, from the UK, what's up? Beautiful heel. Really? Okay. Don't know what that means. Awesome, thanks. You're welcome. What's the best food brand to give your Malinois? Uh, you know, I don't really like to recommend food brands because, like, what if your dog eats it and has, like, explosive diarrhea? You're like, thanks a lot, Andy. But basically, if they sell it at PetSmart or the grocery store, it's absolutely horrible. So stay away from those. Bula from Fiji. I just rescued a puppy that looks like a male, so I am tuning in to learn your amazing tips and pro tricks. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. What's that in American? What's what in American? Does the new crate training video talk about putting on and taking off equipment? Um, not really, Jordan, but when it comes to putting on and taking off equipment for a pet dog, I like to be able to open up the crate door, attach my collar that already has the leash attached. They wait nicely. I tell them free. They come out of the crate. We go and do all of our training, and then I put the dog back in the crate. I reach in. I disconnect their equipment, and then I close the door. So literally, a young dog in training, an old dog who's new to training, there's never a time physically that they are outside of that crate without the equipment on. Now, if you're putting on uh, like a remote collar, you can take, you can, a prong collar, you can open the door, you can slip lead the dog, you can release the dog. Then with the dog right in front of you, you don't have to reach down in there. Then you can attach other equipment, a harness, whatever. Go do your training, come back, take it all off, slip lead in the crate, slip lead comes off. Maybe that'll answer your question. Hello from Belgium, let's go, let's go baby. Howdy, would you recommend adopting a Mali plus how long can you leave a Mali? It's not a, it's not a Malinois thing. It's just a dog thing. You know, how long can you leave a dog? Hey, it, it depends on the dog. Just totally depends. Couple hours. Would you recommend adopting a Mali? Look, if whatever floats your boat, that's like being like, Andy, would you recommend uh, eating pineapples on a pizza? Well, I sure wouldn't eat that. But if you like it, you can. So you do whatever you want. I'm not trolling you. Four to five hours and 15 miles of walking, running, swimming, training every day. I do everything carefully so that the dog does not get tired too much. I, look, I appreciate the, uh, the, the questions and the comments, brother. For me, it's a absolutely horrifying amount of activity. I, I, I just can't tell you how far the other way I am with you on that. Um, the, I mean, I, oh, oh my God, if you take formal, credible canine conditioning courses, like there's, uh, an expert, her name is, uh, Erica. I don't want to mess up her last name. It's, it's boiling. I believe bowling, boiling. There's an I in there. Um, uh, but her name is Erica and she is like the guru for, for canine conditioning and just knows everything. She has all kinds of courses for sale online. I mean, it's so, so in depth. I mean, I scratched the surface with some of her stuff, but she's so in depth. I'm telling you as someone with a massive background in training, conditioning, recovery for a Malinois, I mean, what you're saying, it literally, it couldn't make me crawl out of my skin anymore. Like I feel sick with that amount of exercise. And if possible, like, please don't take it personally. I'm definitely not saying that like 
you're bad or like you're bad. To me, that's an absurd amount of overboard on the exercise. Like, I really can't put into words how utterly insane it is. I hope we can still be friends, though. For sure, tone that down, though. Way too much. Is pulling a bad thing? No. No. Pulling's not a bad thing. Is a dog that has absolutely no healing skills a bad thing? Yeah. Is pulling a bad thing? Absolutely not. Are you kidding me? What do you think tracking is? If you have a police dog, say there's a bad guy and the cops are chasing him and the bad guy pulls over to the side of the road, jumps out of his car and takes off and runs through the woods. Say somewhere in that process, he ditches a weapon. He ditches drug paraphernalia, the middle of the woods. Well, that's dangerous to society to have random weapons and <laughs> drugs and that laying around that some kid could find. Some kids could stumble upon that. So we need a dog that can track that scent and locate those items and track and locate the criminal fleeing. When you train a dog to track, the dog's on leash. The dog's 20 feet in front of you pulling on the leash with their nose down on the track. And you're just following the dog. You know why the dog's on leash? Because if you let it off the leash, the dog's faster than you. And the cop's going to lose the freaking dog. The dog goes, hey, where'd the dog go? They're on leash pulling. When you train bite work, you want the dog pulling. You want back pressure. Pulling you need for dog training. Now, if you go out and buy a golden doodle and the dog's just pulling the owners all up and down the street everywhere and, and they've never done a lick of training in their life, yeah, of course that's bad, but it's not the pulling that's bad. It's they've never done a lick of training in their life that's bad. No, pulling's definitely not a bad thing at all. No training is a bad thing, for sure. Could I go up knocking on people's doors and have dogs and ask them to see if they want their dog trained? Um, I think that's illegal, my brother. I think that's illegal. Thank you for the advice. I will continue to be patient and consistent. That's what it's about. Pet corrector shoots air on Amazon. Yeah, if you got stray dogs running up to you, you got to do something to fend those dogs off, you know? Mine's almost 80 pounds and eight months old today. Is that too big? Hello from Cali. What's up? Yep, too big. What's up, guys? Hey there, Andy. Great channel. I have an eight-month-old male Malinois. No E on the end of Malinois. It's all good, though. He is very protective of us. P protective or possessive? Becomes an issue when we go to town. We live on a farm, and we take him with us once a week. Uh, protective of what? Is there a threat? Is there someone accosting you? Where's the threat? <laughs> I'm... I'm using you as an example a little bit, but everyone goes, oh, my dog's protective. My dog's protective. Your dog's definitely not protective. Like, not even close. Your dog's possessive. You're, do you're, you're a toy to your dog. Your dog owns you. You belong to the dog. That's possession. Your dog's definitely not protecting you. So if I run up and tackle you, your dog's going to take me out? Doubt it. Guaranteed it won't. Protective of what? Protective sounds sexy. Oh, he's protecting me. He's so protective. Oh my God, he's like protecting me. No, he's not. 
He ain't protecting no one. He's saying, this is my toy. This is my toy. You're not his toy. You're the master. It's not protective. If there's no threat, is it protection? Is it protection with no threat? Poor grandma's walking down the street eating her ice cream cone. Your dog's alerting at her. Protecting what? Protecting who from what? Your dog's reactive. He's not fat, though, and looks leanish for the 80-pounder. Look, here's the thing. I'll have a different opinion than you. So you and it, it's all good. All goody. All goody, babe. You look at a dog and you go, oh, no, it's pretty lean, not fat. I'll look at the same dog and go, obese. It's not a one-size-fits-all. It's not like the door is either closed or it's not. Oh, Andy, that door's closed. No, it's open. Andy, the door's clearly closed. Wait, the weight on a dog, it's not, it's purely objective. Is that the right? I always confuse objective and subject. I've had a million clients, people go, oh, no, 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 my dog's not fat at all. My dog's not fat. And I look at the dog and I go, yep, it's fat. And they go, oh, no, the bag, the vet, this, that, his dad, uh, uh, 100 pounds, that, that. And I go, no, that's all fine. It's overweight. So it's just, uh, you know, different. Subjective. There we go. I swear I graduated college. Do you have advice on how to stop my dog from getting excited and all of a sudden pulling on the leash when cars drive past? Um, advice definitely would be dog training. Here's my advice, and I'm coming out with a video on this on Monday. If you're thinking about, if you're focusing on stopping your dog from doing something, you're no longer dog training. What the question should be is, how can I build my heel to be so reliable that no matter what happens, my dog never leaves my side? Now, if you ask me that question, I'm going to be impressed. But if you say, hey, Andy, how do I stop my dog from doing X, Y, and Z? I'm going to go... The question is, and I, I mostly blame the internet. It's really not. It's really not on you. I blame the internet and all the goofballs on YouTube. But the question should be, Andy, how do I build leash manners to be so reliable that my dog never leaves my side, no matter what's going on? That is the question. Is it possible that my dog is insecure around high energy dogs? If so, what should I do to get her used to them? You know, um, I don't do the dog thing. I don't, I don't do the dog thing. Like, hey, this dog is, and then this dog, and then with this, how do I get this? I just train. I'm just a dog trainer. I don't do like Caesar Milan, like, behavioral modification. I don't do this dog, that dog, that my dogs don't mess with other dogs. My, you know, they bop around with each other. We, we don't do any of that kind of stuff. So it's me and my dog. It's our training. It's our goals. It's our lifestyle. I don't worry about no other dogs, no other people. Uh, if the genetics are good, if the training is good, everything else follows. So not trying to be short or anything like that, but I don't really do the Hey, this dog, that dog, the other dog stuff. You know, it's just not really my lane. He reacts to strangers when they make sudden moves near any of us or when someone gives us an energetic hug or high five. Yeah, he's reactive for sure. He's reactive. Definitely needs, uh, you know, boatloads of training. He needs a thousand hours of training and it needs to start from absolute square one. 
And whatever that dog's lifestyle is right now, you basically need to do the opposite because everything that you've done up until this point has gotten you to where you are now. So if you want to radically change the direction you're going, you have to make drastic lifestyle changes. And is that the protection question? He reacts when someone gives you an energetic hug or high five. So someone embracing you in a friendly way. How's that protection? Love your five minute training exercises. Thanks. Mally's 20 months. We do scent work. Find it. Drives crazy high. Pulled every direction till the scent is found. Nice. Keep it up. And he's still working with my Mal. He's almost 10 months. Recently slowly introduced him to a five-month-old Frenchie. They are the best of friends from L.A. What's up, man? Keep training. Sup, Gunther? Great channel. I brought my 10. <laughs> What's a Gunther? I brought my 10-month-old Roddy to the vet yesterday. They wouldn't let me in the building. She was really reactive to the vet tech, and they couldn't handle her. Any advice? Yeah, George, here's the thing. I hate vet. <laughs> no, I, I, I love my vet. Me and my vet are tight. I, I love my vet. But let me tell you this, George, and, you know, this is for whatever it's worth. If you go, oh, Andy, we're going to take your dog inside. You can't come. Andy, we're going to take your dog to the back. You can't come. Nope. No, <laughs> simply no, nope, ain't happening, ain't ha oh, and you better believe I've done that all the time, until I found my vet who, like, our families are like this, I mean, we just go over her house to get stuff done, but, oh, I was a nightmare for any and every vet office, oh, Andy, we just need to take your dog into the back to do a few things. No. Well, I'm going to go. I'll go with you. I'll handle it. Well, no, you can't go back there. He ain't going without me. No, impossible. Nope. What, are you going to come over here and just fight me for him? <laughs> no. You lose anyway. No. Nope. All right. See you then. I'll do something else. I'm not about that. I'm not about that. It'll never, never be something I want, never something that I like. And if you have a dog that isn't just, da, 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 oh, how are you? Like most people probably do, then recipe for disaster. I can't advise, shop around for vets. There's got to be someone in like a 50 mile radius that can not just have to take the dog without you. Yep, with the dog pull, it's all about the, the education. And look, it's not, it's not, it's not a knock on you as a dog owner. If, if you don't know something or you don't have the skills to do something or you think about something in a way that it's not really that way, it's not. Look, you're on the channel right now. You're asking questions. You're getting answers. You're obviously, you know, it's a Saturday afternoon. You could be, you know, just somewhere doing something else. But you're here. You're trying to get the information. You're trying to do what's best for your dog. That's all you can do. So you are definitely on the right track. What state do you live in? The best state. Ohio. Andy, are there any competitions you have been in that I can watch? Would like to watch your dogs compete. Yeah, Kyle, if you scroll down to like some of my earliest YouTube videos, granted the video quality isn't great. I got a bunch of Jasper's competitions on there, like Ring 2, Ring 3. But dude, back, like Kyle, back when I was like com competing with Jasper, I'll do better video for Freddy, but like video so wasn't on my mind at all. I didn't care about Instagram, about YouTube. I didn't care about editing. I wasn't trying to go back and watch. I was get on the field, 
carry out the mission, celebrate after. That was my only goal. So I got some clips from some trials, but nothing, nothing to uh, like like you see my stuff now. Do you think food guarding between dogs can get better with time? It's mainly from a nine-month-old dog towards the older dog. It used to be no issue chewing their own treat. Definitely my fault. Well, we're halfway there because you know that it's your fault. Yeah, it can get better. One dog, one room. The other dog, the other room. Every single time. I know you're like, oh my God, and they don't need to eat around each other. They don't need to both take treats right here. Definitely not a nine-month-old. No, they don't They don't need that. I know it would be nice if you could, but a lot of things would be nice if you could do it, right? I mean, it would be nice if the dog, you know, walked up to me and gave me 100 bucks every day too, but totally separate. Don't even entertain it. Is your GSD a pet? The polar opposite, Matthew. He is a straight up, straight up dog. No, I don't. He's never even been in my house. I like your five minute challenge. Thanks, man. We know Freddie and Jasper, of course. We've also seen your JRT and Spaniel, not your GSD. Just curious. I know, Matthew. Everyone keeps asking about the shot. I'm going to do a video with him. I, I will do a video with, I mean, why haven't I? I just, I got dogs coming out of my ears over here. I don't know. He just, if you, I mean, Matthew, if you actually, like, not in my YouTube stuff, but if you actually scroll through my Instagram a little bit, there's, like, a bunch of stuff of him on my Instagram. This was, like, I was doing, like, a bunch of videos of him in, like, 2018, 2019, but not a ton anymore, but I'll, I'll throw something of him up. Thank you. How do I get alerts for these live sessions? So you subscribe to the channel and then you hit the notification bell. Uh, like, so for example, last night I posted that I would be live today at three. And if you hit the notification bell, it'll pop up on your phone like a text message and say live Q&A tomorrow at three. So you got to hit that bell. Ever help with dogs from the police? Yeah, I used to do a ton of dogs for the police, and I absolutely hate it. Yep, keep vet shopping for sure. Vet's not one size fits all. Just because you're a vet doesn't mean it's for you. Andy, how do I build leash manners? I've been working on heel since I watched the heel videos on Patreon. What else can I do? I hate to answer it like this, but I have a couple of videos coming out on YouTube like Monday and the next week that are going to be really good for this. But um, in short, how do you build leash manners? It's just your dog earns all of their daily meals through your hand on a loose leash and you just keep upping the distraction and the environments. Um, food, 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 luring, 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 fading the lure. Um, a thousand reps in my new video. I go, Oh, a thousand reps. Oh, Andy, you're insane. A thousand. That's so much 10 in the morning, 10 at night, five days. You have a hundred a month and a half. You have a thousand simple. Yep, another comment. You shop around till you find a vet that's for you. Most vets are for the average Joe. I'll tell you guys this right now. The average Joe is not on this live chat right now asking me questions. This is not the average Joe. Everyone on here right now watching and asking questions are above the average Joe because you're out there actively seeking out information and actively trying to make you and your dog better, okay? And it's no knock to people that don't. 
you know, like you have a family with a bunch of kids, you get a doodle, doodles run, I don't care about training, I'm busy. Okay, well, good, good for you, no worries, but yeah, you, then you can go to any vet you want. Hey, you can't come inside. Oh, okay, here's Fluffy, take him, bye-bye. Okay, kids, Fluffy's going inside. But if you're on this channel and if you watch my stuff, you're above average. So vets, vets are like dog trainers. There's a lot of them, and there's 1% that are really good. Sorry, it's true. My 15-month-old is all of a sudden fearful of the city. How do I work on this? We live in the countryside, but take occasional trips to the city. You know, to work on it, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change. I would just keep doing what you're doing. And again, if the dog's nervous, if the dog's scared, the dog's allowed to be nervous and scared. Just keep doing what you've been doing. Don't try to kiss their butt. Don't try to correct them. Just be and take the information that the dog gives you. Gunther means legend, by the way. Thanks, George. Hell yeah, I'll take it, man. I'll take it. My buddy got me that. Shout out, Zach. Can I get you on my podcast? Yeah, it all depends. Send me a message. Hit me on Instagram, Andy underscore Kruger. DM me. We'll talk. Just hit the bell. Nice. Who's the greatest French ring dog slash handler team of all time? Holy crap. That's like, who's the best basketball player? Uh, I'll tell you this. I don't know. I, I can't give an, an answer to that one person specifically, but I'll tell you this. I'll give you this. Uh, there's a guy named Stéphane Briere. He won the French championship in, I forget the date. It was recent, 2016, 2015. But anyway, I had the opportunity to train with him a couple of years ago. And he's just one of my favorites. Legend. You can find the, win the winning routines on YouTube. If you, Stefan Briere, French finale something or I forget it. Uh, but the greatest of all time, I mean, it depends on your flavor, dude. It's like asking a New Yorker, hey, what's the greatest pizza of all time? It's like asking someone from Chicago, hey, what's the best pizza of all time? So everyone, hey, is it LeBron? Is it Jordan? Everyone's going to have their different. Um, there's a thousand guys that I'm not thinking of. There's probably a thousand guys I don't even know of, but Briere's one of the real ones for sure. Right now, though, this weekend, uh, Mark Vallon and his son Axel Vallon are both competing in the final, and I am foaming at the mouth to see their scores. Foaming. My buddy's there right now. I should text him, but he's like, with his kid, I don't want to bother him. Love your videos. Working with my Dutch Shepherd using your videos. Nice. What do you think about a GS American cattle dog and an Australian cattle dog in one house? Hey, man, if you're if you're doing good and the dogs are good, ain't no problem. Is your GSD from when you participated in PSA? I think you recalled. Uh, no, no, I got him in like 2018. I raised him and trained him and sold him to somebody six months later. They he was too much dog for them. They brought him back and he's just been kind of chilling ever since. Uh, you know, the right person, I would definitely sell him. He's like a police dog on steroids. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll try to do a video with him. He's cool. He's all black. His name's Knight. He's a badass. If you, though, like if you scroll through my Instagram, like go down a little while, you'll see a bunch of stuff on him on Instagram. I used to post mad stuff on Instagram before YouTube. So there's a ton of stuff. He's like a bona fide police dog. Uh, but no, never did PSA or competed with it. PSA, I ended PSA. I did PSA like 09 to like 2013. And then, you know, I got him. He was born in 
2018. So, what's the hardest or longest task or trick, etc., you've had to teach a man? It's the French Ring 3 program. That's the hardest thing, the longest thing you could ever train a dog to do is the French Ring 3 program unparalleled. I'm still laughing at, I'm not your kennel cough guy. <laughs> I don't know. Would you recommend a Malinois for a first-time dog trainer or would that be too much? It'd be too much. Start with a Golden Retriever or a Lab. My dog isn't afraid of the vacuum. Have I created a monster? <laughs> nah, you'll be all right. Yo, yo, 10-month-old Roddy. She's neutral with strangers until they get within a few feet and she's reactive. Like if someone tries to pet her, which I don't allow. Thoughts? Yeah, that's tough, George. You might just have to take like several months to not let anyone come near her at all. You could be dealing with some genetic stuff there too. It, it could be some genetic stuff. So... 10 months old, you got some time, man. You got some time. Couple months, keep her in her, her comfort zone. Don't let anyone come up, make her uncomfortable. No worries. I'm not offended. That's why I'm here to learn what I do wrong. I'll have to watch more and read more. Walking a lot off leash, enjoying. <sighs> I will have to watch more and read more. His walking a lot off leash, enjoying forests, meadows, rivers, but you said it's wrong. Now, I actually didn't say that's wrong. I said the amount was absurd. Take your dog to forests all the time. Meadows, rivers, sure. Do that all the time. How about a half hour, my man? How about that? Don't be putting words in my mouth now, but thank you for not being offended, man. You're here to learn. Hey, I respect that. Hey, Andy, early this month on, oh, there's Logan. Hey, Andy, early this month on call, you instructed me to stop using commands for a month and work on just charging yes and good. It's fine to do that while walking on a leash. Definitely, for sure. Hey, Andy, I have a six-month-old male, got her three months, but in the state we live, it's a no rabies state. She just got out two days ago. You have any tips on how to get her back on focus mode? Engagement, hand feeding, absolute basics, 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 basics. It's never too basic. How do I make my dog not possessive of my house when friends come over? You crate that dog when anyone arrives and then after 20, 30 minutes, you go get the dog on leash and your dog is on leash, doesn't leave your side. Hand feed. Don't have the dog loose anytime anyone shows up. That's for sure. All right, y'all. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I got a couple boarding trains. I'm going to go pop out and train. Thanks, y'all, for being here. Buy my merch, for God's sakes. How many hours? How many hours? I got to answer your questions before you buy the damn shirt. Hit my Patreon, patreon.com slash Andy Kruger. She Bites shirts are coming soon. My YouTube channel is about to be absolutely ridiculous. I'm upping the amount of information I'm giving you on there. I have some videos where I'm like, why the hell am I giving this away? You guys are going to love it. Keep your eyes peeled on my YouTube channel. I got some, I think, game-changing stuff happening and I'm going to make all the other goofballs on YouTube look like exactly that. Goofy. So, happy training, y'all. We'll see you next time. Peace.